Welcome to season one of the PMO Community Podcast series. I am Aina Lai, your guide on this engaging exploration into the world of PMO leadership, highlighted by our unique book writing challenge. This season promises a series of enriching interviews with our distinguished book co-authors. Today, I am thrilled to converse with Sophia Walker, an experienced technology management professional with over 15 years dedicated to technology strategy and project management. Sophia has cultivated a broad expertise in business development and the implementation of innovative service initiatives. Her involvement in management teams and advisory councils has not only deepened her understanding, but also fortified the success of various organizations. Today, we will explore several pivotal topics and common challenges faced by professionals in the field, such as origin and inspiration, what led Sophia to explore the PMO evolution and the emerging role of the chief project officer, common misconceptions, how to tackle prevalent misunderstandings about the PMOs, IT managers as chief project officer, the challenges they face and how organizations can better support them, shared accountability, how a well-structured PMO can cultivate a culture of shared responsibility, setting up the PMO, practical advice for organizations establishing a PMO for the first time, future of project management, predictions for the next decade in project management and PMOs. Stay tuned as Sophia shares her profound expertise and strategies for navigating the complexities of modern project management. Don't miss out our upcoming episodes. Follow us on our social media such as YouTube, LinkedIn, Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify to stay updated. Hello, Sophia. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. Thank you so much. Looking forward to this. Me too. All right. So, uh, Sophia, my first question to you is related to the book writing challenge on the topic rise of a uh, PMO and the chief project officer. So, Sophia, why did you decide to dedicate your time and effort to contribute to this book? Oh, thank you. Well, it was an awesome opportunity. You know, I had a lot of ideas about what would be important, what would be beneficial for persons in this book. And this particular topic is one that is close to me personally. Um, at some point in my career, I was director of IT, and so I was leading a group of IT teams. And a lot of what I was doing was managing projects. I found that a lot of what you do as you move higher in the technology arena is really managing projects. It is executing. It is working with business units to get things done. And so in that role, you know, I was IT director, but for me, it's more than just IT that should manage projects, especially if the projects are beneficial to the whole organization. And so that is where that whole idea of a properly structured PMO or a chief PMO came about, that it should be someone who may have technology background, may have technology experience, but it really should be someone a bit more general in the organization. It should not just rest with IT, the execution of projects. What are some like common misconceptions you've encountered about the PMO and uh, how do you normally address them in your work experience? So what I have found also is that even though you may have IT driving projects, which you will find in a lot of organizations, and certainly uh, IT is strategically aligned with almost everything that happens, simply because almost every project has some type of technical aspect. So you do need IT involvement. But what I think is a negative part of having IT drive projects instead of a proper PMO is that the rest of the business units can say, well, IT is driving that. So that's IT's responsibility. You know, let IT report on it. Let IT fix all of the problems. You know, maybe it went sideways because IT didn't do something. And it's because IT is driving it. So I find that that is one of the negative aspects. The other thing is, you know, if you are driving IT, you also have day-to-day -day operational responsibilities in addition to driving projects that are really to the benefit of the entire company. And you don't have the authority necessarily to go outside of IT and control anyone else's area or to make a project a priority. Um, you are given projects to do by the business, but you cannot really force the business to do anything because they have their own responsibilities. So I'll just give a quick example. You know, an HR 
business head wants an HR platform. So certainly IT would need to be involved, but IT doesn't use an HR platform. You know, we can help you put it in place, but you have to be the ones driving it, making sure that it's meeting all the deliverables, making sure that it is integrated properly and um, providing positive results for the business. And so the accountability should really lie with the persons who are initiating it, who need it the most, as opposed to the persons who are really trying to execute it, which is IT. So I find that those two things are some of the biggest challenges when you don't have a properly structured PMO or a chief PMO. What are the biggest challenges managers face in their capacity and how can organizations better support them? And also, if we have an unofficial role of IT managers as a chief project officers, would it be helpful for the organizations? So I think as an IT manager, you know, Regular IT managers in day-to-day -day functions, you know, they're used to crisis management for the most part. They're used to fixing problems, uh, break-fix type of day-to-day -day activities. Uh, but the management of projects, overall projects that touch the entire organization, IT is always involved. But IT managers don't necessarily have an overall perspective of how it impacts the entire business. And I think that is one of the challenges that IT managers have. Yes, I can implement software. Yes, I can install licenses. Yes, I can give you a login ID and I can make sure it's up and running for you to use. But when you want to add in users and say, okay, how do you set up the rules for a 360 performance review or something like that? I'm IT. I don't do that. I don't know how to do that, but I can make sure that the application is always available for you. And I think that is one of the challenges. Uh, that business units uh, tend to place at the feet of IT, which is IT should know all of that. Well, IT may know the technical aspects, but they don't necessarily know the operational and the business aspects. So I think it's unfair to make the IT person have to be responsible for that as well. And so what businesses can do uh, to support or to make that process more efficient is understand that the person who is managing projects really should have better authority across the organization, and they should have autonomy to be able to drive change across the organization. And it should be recognized by everyone that this person is driving a project, not just for themselves, but for all of us. And we have to support this person. So it has to be something where it has the support of, I guess, the executive level um, that this person or this area has responsibility for driving the strategic initiatives. They're not just doing it for their own benefit. They're doing it for all of us. So I think that that is a mindset shift that has to change uh, so that persons aren't just saying, oh, these IT people are always, always trying to execute projects. No, these IT persons are trying to be the chief PMO and execute projects that are for the benefit of, of us all. So I think that that is something that needs to shift. It's a mind shift that companies need to make to support whoever becomes the chief PMO. And it may very well be an IT person but it needs to be a different title for that person so that they can just do that and they can move away from IT operational work if it is an IT person. Could you elaborate a little bit deeper on how a well-structured PMO can foster a culture of shared responsibility? Yeah, so I actually had the opportunity to work on setting up PMO for a client. And one of the major challenges that we had was really looking at your business, right? Looking at your business in particular and looking at the structure today. And so the question becomes, if you were to introduce a centralized PMO, what do you need to change in terms of the structure of the business to make that work? One of the biggest things that came out of that exercise was there has to be full transparency. So it has to be an understanding of what exactly is the PMO going to work on? How are they going to report to the rest of us? What are the different roles and responsibilities going to be and how do they work together? So if the PMO is going to be centralized, then every other business unit has to understand how they fit into that. So is it kind of a spoken wheel where the PMO is centralized, but you have uh, liaisons in each business unit that come together to manage projects? Or is it going to be something where the PMO sits perhaps at the executive level and at that executive level, they have management or they have authority to give direction to other areas underneath them, all areas underneath them. So it, it, it all depends on the way the business is already structured 
And to me, the easiest way to implement a PMO is to introduce it in a way where you can get the quickest buy-in from the rest of the organization um, so that they understand the benefit to them. Not that you're trying to take away their responsibility of projects, but that we're trying to help you to make sure that your project actually gets executed successfully by sharing the responsibility with this PMO. And that way the PMO could support you in making sure that you have proper budget, uh, proper feasibility, picking the right vendors, making sure that you proper uh, follow proper methodology in terms of testing and training, which the business units don't necessarily always do. Certainly they cannot do it on their own. And so I think that is one of the best ways for businesses to introduce a PMO. Look at your own business, look at the structure and see how you can implement this unit in a way where others don't feel as if you're taking something away from them and they can see the benefit. What do you think are the key steps that business should follow to set up the PMO the first time, not just to introduce, but to set it up and make it successful? I think the biggest thing is probably the policy around it, right? So what is this PMO going to be doing? You know, you don't want to introduce uh, another area or another unit and, and just say, oh, here's this PMO, just listen to them, just do what they say. You want to introduce a policy around it and you want to fully document it and make it make it plainly visible to everyone to say, this is what the PMO is going to do. Maybe um, determine a list of projects that the PMO will manage. Also demonstrate with a project, almost a proof of concept. So if there is a project ongoing in the organization, you can say, okay, this particular project will be driven by the PMO. And this is the way that you can actually demonstrate or you can prove to the rest of the business, this is how we will follow a methodology. And this is how we will try to ensure that we have success. This is how we will report. And this is how we will document whether or not there's uh, value gained for this project whether or not there's return on the investment. And by doing that, you can show the rest of the business, okay, this makes sense that we manage projects like this so that going forward, we can all see whether or not a project was quote unquote successful or not. You know, not just in someone's mind, but you can actually prove it because it came in on time, on budget. The resources that we said we were going to use, we used, and we did not have any type of scope creep we, we did what we said we were going to do and the results are visible and the persons that wanted this project executed, they are pleased with the, the, with the outcome. So I think that that is one of the best ways to introduce it. You actually have to demonstrate the value. Um, you outline what the PMO is supposed to do, but then you demonstrate the value by actually um, using a set of projects to show how it's supposed to work and everybody can see how it works and how it can bring value to them as well. Could you bring us any example from your uh, professional life uh, when PMO directly contributed to achieving strategic goals and uh, also the impact, if it was, on that? Yes. So one of a, a recent experience that I had was with a PMO, you know, when, when you go into an organization and you start talking about PMO, one of the biggest ways that I have found that you can get by in is to actually start is to actually ask business units to list all of the things that they have that they're working on. And what you will find is that there's a lot of overlap with a lot of what persons are doing. And they sometimes don't realize it because they're working in silos. You know, you have HR working on something, you have finance working on something, and you have different units working on different things. And there are a lot of synergies that can be gained if there was a centralized unit that was actually looking at it and working on it together with them. And so I have found that going in to talk about PMOs, that is one of the biggest benefits right away. Ask them to list what are all the things that they're working on. And as you, from an objective perspective, listen to them, you say, well, you know, you guys are actually working on some very similar things. If we bring them together, we can have better synergies and better efficiency. And sometimes at the executive level, they don't realize it either because a lot of it is one-on-one -on -one communication, working in silos, trying to be very effective and very productive. But if you take a step back and you look at it from a holistic point of view, you'll realize that if you bring it all together so that one central unit has visibility of it all, you can actually gain more synergies. And so I find that that is one of the biggest ways to try to bring value at the very beginning and to prove that a PMO makes sense as opposed to everyone working on their own in silos. 
So, Sofia, where do you see the field of project management and the role of the PMO hidden in the next decade? And on the top of that, can you anticipate any trends or changes that uh, professionals uh, should be preparing for? Well, certainly I find that as I work with clients, um, clients are seeing a bigger value in terms of how projects need to be executed. Um, what I have found is that a lot of companies tend to have just persons within the organization trying to complete projects off the side of their desk. It's very typical because you don't want to increase your head count, but you want to get things done. And so I find that a lot of companies are now much more open to actually hiring project managers, full-time project managers. So that has changed, I have found. And in that, project managers can now um, rally behind the idea of you know, we project managers need to work together and we need to be more centralized. And so that is coming as well. And so I think that companies are now much more open to, you know, instead of us trying to all work on projects together, but nobody's really leading it, we do need persons to take responsibility and lead the projects. And then from there, the project managers can say, okay, we've demonstrated the value of a full-time project manager and project managers actually man managing projects now let's take it a step further and centralize it so that we have better visibility of everything that's going on. So I do see, um, I, I don't think it will be overnight, but I do see a trend toward uh, more full-time project managers in organizations actually managing projects with the skill, with the skill set and the experience to do that following proper methodology. And then along with that will come, you know, a, a, a more, more openness and a, a, more acceptance of the PMO. So I do see it trending slowly, but I think more conversations like this and more demonstration of the value of the PMO. And I think that the concept will actually grow a lot more in organizations. Looking forward for it. Thank you very much. Yes. Lots of things to think about after this podcast. Yes. Thank you for tuning in to the PMO Community Podcast for this enlightening discussion with Sophia Walker. A special thanks to our volunteers and the PMO Community Podcast for making this episode possible. Stay tuned for more captivating insights and interviews in our upcoming episodes. And don't forget to follow us on social media to stay updated. If you find this episode valuable, please remember to like and share it. Feel free to reach out to me, Aina Live, on LinkedIn with any questions or requests. And for all of the latest updates, make sure to follow us on our social media such as YouTube, LinkedIn, Podbean, and Spotify, Apple Podcasts.